I will never forget the feeling of getting a complete game like Halo 3 or Reach or Gears of War or even Titanfall 2 knowing that when I get home I get to try an awesome campaign. I know the game's got a great multiplayer. It may have a cool PvE mode like Horde or Firefight. And I also do that that game is probably going to get a sequel or a follow up in like three or four years down the road. These days, it's that one multiplayer mode, it's that one live service thing, and it's supposed to last 10 years. You know, this topic has been beaten to death online the last few years, but I think it's important to talk about. Not every game needs to be your forever game. Not every game developers build has to be something that lasts forever that is built around FOMO that tries to trick you with live service and LTMs and skins and all of this stuff into playing it day in, day out with no other games on the plate. You know, those complete games, I really do miss, especially in the FPS space. Look, live service can work, especially when games are designed from, you know, the ground up with that in mind. MMOs are a really good example, but when they're just shoehorned in the way like FPS games in particular, have been the last few years, it's a bummer for the player because we lose campaigns, we lose cool PvE stuff. It all just becomes either content for a limited time mode slated for like year three, or it just doesn't happen at all. I really like the way Titanfall 2 did this, where it released, it was content complete, it was a great game, and then the next nine months, Respawn put out monthly content updates that brought new, cool, meaningful things, all leading up to an entire PvE mode in the Frontier Defense thing, and it was great. Halo Infinite is probably the closest example that we have. I don't, I don't want to play Halo Infinite for 10 years. It's not the type of game I want to see being a 10-year game. I think a lot of players look forward to a sequel because it gives the developers the opportunity to put new tech in, new opportunities to innovate, new design choices, ways to shift it up. To know that you're going to be playing a similar sandbox and a similar piece of tech for 10 years is not healthy for the player. And it's certainly not healthy for the developer. I've been thinking about the Bungie layoffs a lot. I really can't get over it because Destiny was near and dear to my heart. And I feel for all those devs affected. But if Destiny... <laughs> couldn't make it work, then why are these other publishers just continually chasing the live service model? It's taken out so many great studios. I think about it this way too, Anthem. Anthem had great movement. It felt really cool. And Bioware was an awesome company. But if you gave me the choice of a 25 hour finished story game only, like Anthem, if it was built in the way that Bioware probably would have wanted to build it, not live service. I, I'd take that any day over the live service unfinished game that we received. No, you know, the 25 hour game wouldn't be the game that lasted 10 years and the developers could always count on the fact that it was a forever game. Players would buy it, play it, enjoy it and move on. And it's okay. Like that is okay. We don't need games. Or I should say, we don't need every game to be a forever game. I had a comment on one of the previous videos asking, hey, Dragoon, how many games are you playing at one time? Because I upload a lot of list videos recommending a bunch of different games. And usually I'm playing like four or five games at a time. But here's the trick. I don't guilt myself into finishing something I'm not enjoying. I put stuff down all the time. I revisit it all the time. And there's plenty of games that I put 10 hours into and I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling this. And I never come back. And that's okay. Like, that's what I grew up with, where you played a lot of different games by yourself, with friends. You tried lots of different things. And it's okay to finish a game and be done with it. I really respect the developers who understand this concept. You know, even, okay, let's look at a live service, a successful one, Final Fantasy XIV. The developers have talked about, hey, play our content, enjoy the expansion, but what you're done, step away. Come back when the new content's there, enjoy it fresh. I don't think our brains are meant to do anything day in, day out, forever, without getting bored or burned out on it. 
there are some games where it makes total sense to play it. It's a long-term kind of a game. Counter-Strike makes sense that it's it's Counter-Strike and it's going to be that and it's the game that you will play five years from now and it's still going to be Counter-Strike. They're not gonna make major design changes to it. That makes sense. Esports are a little different, but when it comes to just every genre and every big publisher trying to shove all of these franchises into a live service, just look at the wake of studios that have been shut down trying to chase that. It is raining super hard right now. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. You know, until publishers learn and make a pivot, we're just gonna continue to get more and more live service messes that are just hollow experiences. Honestly, too much of a good thing always becomes stale, always falls off, always isn't that enjoyable anymore. One of the best things that you can do for yourself if you're feeling burned out on a game or gaming on the whole, try something else or just take a break altogether. And I do think we're just starting to peek around the corner where the more casual gaming audience is realizing that live service may not be the way forward, may not be the only type of games that they want to play. I feel like the experienced gamers, and especially if you're watching this YouTube channel, viewers like you totally get it. You can search live service in the YouTube bar and yeah, you'll have hundreds of videos talking about pretty much the same thing, how the industry is going in a really unsustainable direction that's not great for the player. But I feel like, and I could be wrong, more broad universal like gamer is starting to crave something different. I just hope that the publishers don't continue to just destroy studios chasing this dream of the never ending game. This is Dragoon from the future. I just finished editing the video and I wanted to say one more thing about burnout. It's so important to listen to yourself and be aware of when you're on the verge of a burnout with a hobby or a game or something that you like. Live service games can really mask a lot of those signals because they're built around creating FOMO and making it like, no, you can't take a break. You'll miss this event. You'll miss the skin. You'll miss this thing. And it's never coming back. And that can be really hard for people who lack discipline. So I just, it's critical that if you're getting really tired of something, if you're burning out on it, take a break and really be in tune with yourself and give yourself the permission to take a break, especially if it's a hobby for something that you just enjoy. Anyway, it was important. I wanted to add it. Do you think we're turning to the quarter? Uh, more life service games, less life service stuff. Is the next era or iteration of gaming coming? I sure hope so. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon.